first game to now? Well, I mean, I think we've grown. And when you look at it, you know, we've grown in so many areas. We've had so many obstacles and, you know, um, I think our, our guards have gotten better understanding the rest of our team. You know, one early in the season, they were better scorers, but now I think they realize how to get everybody the ball to be effective to help us. I think we have grown defensively. Uh, we've shown some games where we can be really solid and, um, you know, lock down and defend. And so I think more, th more than anything, we matured and we've been able to come together as a, a team more than we have, you know, f a few weeks ago, you know. Well, you, got, you didn't have it the first game with Jack Clark. He will have it this time. Just how much should that help you? Like, well, he attacking. Yeah, he gives us uh, Chip another guy who can score the basketball. You know, um, you know, Greg and Ernest have done a tremendous job, um, but they're not scorers. They're more defensive guys. And so when you add a guy like Jack to the to your lineup and you put him in the game, you have to guard him because of his ability to stretch your defense out and be able to make shots behind the three point line. Did he come out of that game physically okay? He is. Four minutes and he played. Yeah, too many. Too many, Chip. I didn't have a, you know, I, I wanted to play him about 20 minutes in that game. But, of course, when you're playing against Syracuse zone, you need as many shooters as you can have on the floor. But I think he's fine right now. What did you see from the first game in terms of what you can do to slow down R.J. Davis? When R.J. Davis is playing well, one of the things we can't give him, I think he was 12 for 12 on the free throw line. We got to do a better job of not putting him on the line because obviously he didn't miss. But he's tough. Um, you know, the only way to stop a, a guy like him who can really score the basketball is to try to limit his touches. And I think we got to do a better job of, you know, limiting his touches, not giving him easy shots. He's a tough matchup because he's got the 15, 18 foot pull up. Then he can shoot threes, and then he can also finish at the rim. And then, as we talked about, you don't want to foul him because you can almost count those. You talked also after the first game about if you double bank out, then it opens up shooters. But then, obviously, if they cuts one on one, like it's a pick your poison type of deal. Do you still see yourself wanting to not double bank out? Well, it's one of those things. Is like I think a lot of teams go in our game trying to figure out do you double DJ Burns or give the other guy shots. Same thing with Baycock. He's become, over his career, he's become a really good passer. And so I think you had to pick and choose whether you decide if you're going to double him that night. Um, I think you had to go into every game prepared to maybe possibly throw some doubles at him and every now and then. But he's such a, you know, he because he's gotten doubled this year, he's become a really good passer out of that. And so we got to figure that out. And um, I don't know exactly what we're going to do yet. Looking at the tape, how do you feel like the team played in the Syracuse game overall? I Look, we didn't make shots, which Syracuse zone has a lot to do with everybody that they play that don't make shots. Mm -hmm. But I thought we put ourselves in position on the road to have an opportunity to win. We knew it was going to be a tough game. You look at the every game that they played at home, meaning Syracuse, it came down to the wire. And, you know, I even watched the Carolina game and obviously, um, you know, when they got the charge at the end, that kind of separated the game. But I didn't think we shot the ball well, which a lot of that has to do with them. But I did think we played well enough to be able to win the game at the end. We see a lot of high school players mm -hmm. that are big men who want to be outside shooters now. How refreshing is it that this is a real old school low post matchup on Sunday? Oh, it's a major league. I mean, this is a major league low post game. Um, you know, Hubert or Hubert and I are both probably known more as um, guards coaches or perimeter guys, man. But we t we got two guys that make us look like we know what we're doing in the post. Um, <laughs> those guys are really good. I mean, they're they're two of the most talented guys, not only in our league in the country as far as playing with their back to the basket. You don't see that anymore. You pay attention to the net rankings and Ken Ball and. Always about where you stand and you keep an eye on that. Only when somebody tell me. So, I'm, well, where are we at today, Chip? Because I know you may not. <laughs> uh, you were 30, what? 38, I think. No, that was yesterday. 38, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah. Only, only when somebody tells me. Um, you know, we do, I do know when I'm playing a certain team what quad they are because I think that's important. You know, um, and I think with our remaining schedule, I think we either got, you know, quad twos or one quad one available. So I, I do know that part of, but I don't look at the net daily. Is it important for the team not to get too far ahead of itself and start thinking, 
we're closing in maybe on an NCAA bid or something like this. Uh, we can or just been a good team that's been able to stay. Oh no, Chip. We don't. We only. We we're only worried about what practice looked like today. I mean, we can't. You know, I did, with this group, we just kind of. You know, we go day by day, and um, the big picture. Obviously, I think you can achieve a lot with the big picture, which we've done so far. But we don't. We don't. We don't look ahead. Coach, this is a bit of a pivot, but you were at the women's game last night, mm -hmm. and afterwards, um, Coach Moore was talking about how you and Coach Doran have um, kind of supported him through this season. Um, and that's something you've talked about in the past with them supporting you. And what, what's that brotherhood like for you? It's great, man. I mean, you know, those guys, um, if you want to use the word, I'm, I'm the freshman coming in because they've been there. Uh, Coach Moore, I don't know, was Coach Moore the senior, maybe Dave's a junior. I don't know what it is. But, you know, they have done a really, really good job, you know, over the years of developing, uh, developing a culture in their program. And um, that was something that we wanted coming in. You know, we took over. It was such a challenge to get – you know, the right pieces to get everything on the right track. And, um, you know, our, our friendship and um, respect for each other as coaches has really, really been special. And we are supportive. Um, you know, uh, in coaching, you don't have a lot of people to talk to when you're a head coach because a lot of people don't go through some of the things you go through. Um, and I, I would say those two guys, um, whether it's a text or conversation we've had, and you know, you got to know Wes. Uh, Wes is the best, but he thinks that is um, the world's falling in when he lose a game. And I told him, I said, hey, until you go through a, game, a year like I went through last year, stop complaining. <laughs> and uh, what a great, what a great win. Um, you know, he he's done a great job. It was I'm so happy that he got the game last night and he won that game. Uh, his girls, uh, young ladies, are really fighting really hard and um you know he's he's dropped some games that you know west moore's team would normally drop but he also lost some really good players and that's one of the things i've had to tell him is a you know lisa canane and that crew was really good and and these these young ladies will get their own identity and i think they're finding it and so i'm happy for um you know everybody's success and i think each one of them are very happy for the success that we're having this year well I mean, we got to we got to do a way better job defending. I, I mean, I thought Baycock really, really hurt us um, in both ways. Um, you know, obviously he's such a tough matchup for our guys and most of the guys that play against him. But you know, rebounding and um, he was able to score the basketball. And you know, you can't let him beat you in so many ways. Um, you know, obviously his ability to score with his back to the basket where he's gotten a lot better. Um, I think, you know, obviously one of the things is we got to do a better job of keeping him off the offensive glass. His numbers were like playing video game. He was so good. And, and then we have to continue um, to do a great job getting back in transition. I think in the first and round one, we only gave up six transition baskets, um, which is pretty good when you play against a Carolina team because of the way they run. But we got to stay solid. I think we got to, you know, our defense has to be really good. You, you. Coach, Coach, Coach Bayer, I mean, after the game, like, yeah, I'll see you next year. But, I mean, is it a little weird now where you kind of gone through this transition where you saw some some coaches who have obviously coached well into their 70s, and then do you ever think, like, how weird it would be or exciting for you if you ever coached into your 70s? Or do you kind of have in your mind, like, okay, I'm, I'm out at a certain age. I don't I want to enjoy life. Yeah, well, the guys that we lost in our business, when I say lost, I shouldn't say yeah. lost. That's not the right word. The guys who have retired and gone on to do different things, uh, man, we lost some great coaches, and um, we'll continue to lose some great coaches. But at the end of the day, I just think it's a feel. I, I, you, you can say how long you want to do a job or how long you want to work. Um, it comes down to your health. comes down to um, you know how well you can deal with the changes uh, at that time of basketball. And, you know, do you still have passion to do the job with great energy? And, you know, everybody, you know, it, it comes down to you want to spend more time with your family, your grandkids. And so everybody's situation is completely different. So I don't have an age where I want to coach to. Uh, as long as I can bring great energy and passion and feel like I'm really still helping young men, then I want to coach. You got the 83 team coming in for one of the games next year. Do you remember the 83 I mean, the game's being played. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You were pretty young at the time. 
Yeah, I remember the 83 team, and um, Derek Wittenberg will not never let me forget mm-hmm. about it. I'll mm-hmm. just be around here. But, no, uh, that's a special moment. And, um, you know, kudos to, um, you know, uh, our athletic director, Boo Corrigan, for making this happen. And uh, we're glad to get uh, as many members as we can of that 83 t- national championship team here on campus. And, you know, they're going to get a chance to spend a little time with us. And more importantly, as our team, we're going to get a chance to spend a little time with them and hopefully they get a chance to stop by practice. And, you know, I just – I love um, their story. Um, they created something where no one thought that they were ever going to win and it's it forever will be the best story in college basketball. And so I think that's so special for my current players to be a part and have a chance to meet those guys. They've met most of them. But as a group, the guys who will come back, I think that's so special for us. And what a special group of guys. And, um, you know, they I've had a chance to meet the majority of them and, you know, just to hear them talk about their experience. And there were no egos and how guys got better and, and obviously just took off. I think that's wonderful. Where were you in 83? Oh, man, Chip, I had, uh, I'm going to have to look that up. Yeah, I can't tell you. I don't know, man. I was – I was um, good. Eighty three. I don't know. You put me on the spot right there. Was I in middle school? Maybe <laughs> middle. Maybe middle school. I don't know. You do remember seeing? I do. Yeah, I do. And then I remember um, when I became the head coach at um, Hargrave and meeting um, Sidney Lowe. Mm-hmm. You know, we we had Lorenzo Brown and. Some really good players come mm-hmm. through here. They went to NC State. Kenny Ings also went through there, though he, and he, even though he didn't play for Sydney. And then Wittenberg, at the time, Wittenberg was uh, recruiting uh, for uh, Georgia Tech. Yeah. He screwed up David West. So if you just want to have an ever story, just let him know. That, yeah, ask him about that. He screwed up David West. David West wanted to come there, and Wittenberg couldn't close the deal. So. But what what a great group of people. Sydney's been Sydney's a former uh, player, obviously that was the coach here, and right. he's been outstanding. I mean, you know, yeah. since I've taken the job, and didn't have to be because of his um, you know his time here as a coach, but greater as a player. You know. Since people ask me all the time about eligibility, can you does Burns have another year that he can play here, or is he done? After Burns has another year that he could play here. Joiner he does not have any eligibility left. Clark. Clark has another year. He has one more year. Yes. Okay. That's, this is good for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's good. Well, yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah, no. Graduates I mean, and it's, it's funny that you ask that because most people don't know or guess and all that other stuff. But the answer to those two, they do have a, another year eligibility and um, Jarkel doesn't. Now, we, we, can, we can figure out if we could figure out how to get Jarkel joined another year. I would love to have that. Yeah. Yeah. He does not. He does not. Yeah. How much more difficult does it make roster management when um, you have like three or four guys that could come back? I think you have to. Like two things I've decided not to do in the ACC. I never look ahead at the schedule because it would scare you, and you're like, oh my goodness, you never want to look at three or four games in advance because you're like, man, oh my goodness, because at that point you're saying, man, I got these guys, I got these guys, these guys. My new thing is I never look ahead and try to figure out who's coming back. Like, you can't figure that out. You know, we have to deal with it uh, when it happens. Uh, I would tell you that every program, including NC State, you're going to lose some really good players. But fortunate enough, you're going to be able to go out and find some good players that fit what you want to do and that want to be at NC State. And not that the guys that leave don't want to be here, but there may be a better opportunity for them. There may be some situation that they like a little bit more. Um, and, and if that case, and if that's the case, you want to go out and get some guys that you feel like they want to be here and obviously you know be a part of this program.